Nigeria has produced some of the most brilliant poets ever to come out of Africa. I mean poets who in many ways have immensely influenced our art, culture, literature, and intellectual advancement. Wale Shoenka, Christopher Okigbo, Chinua Achebe, John Pepe Clark, Mabel Shegun, Niyi Oshundari, Jimmy Sholanke, Tanure Ojaide, Peter Fato Melola, and Gabriel Okara. You may want to call most of those I just listed members of the old generation. They have since been followed by other great poets who have succeeded at producing works as qualitative as those previously produced by the mentioned icons. But what we have today are brilliant young poets who are adding a combination of creativity, entertainment, and powerful messages to their poems. Many of them do not just write poems, they also perform them and seek to influence society with their creative ideas. Mustering up strength to lift up a swollen lid of my eyes, I see you. I'm gonna wake you. I blink again due to blurred vision, and all I see are wolves in church linens that have carved out judgment seats of wooden images that they created for themselves to sit in. Stop! Death, hell, and damnation eternal make sense for the offense. Then they seal my sentence with biblical words like wrath and judgment. I nervously sweat out every ounce I had of sanity and was intravenously given liquids of confused agony, rightfully accused, so I willingly traded truth for a straight jacket padded white walls and no shoes right down the hall from a lady singing the blues. Amazing. Same grace. Where we go from right to wrong, from, from life to dark, that, that turns me on like a switch, and you switch when you walk. So justify human, justify sins, you're already condemned, and just allow me to cause you to pass the rock of your salvation, which brings deliverance to your soul. Now that you can never play me, see, I just gave you an assist. You took yourself to the hole. The fact that a guy has a car he drives doesn't mean he should take you for a ride. You know what I mean? All those flimsy lies, like he calls you my sweet potato pie. Uh huh. You know what? It's made from flour. If you yield, he will done with you in one hour. And then you feel so very cheap. And then you feel so very cheap. And then you feel so very cheap. And then you feel so very chill. You have probably met him here before, but to get us rolling, here's one of the more popular members of this new generation of poets. Ife Paul Azido is the director of the Lagos International Poetry Festival, the director of poetry at the annual book and art festival. The director of Spoken Word Poetry are the Open Book Series International Cultural Exchange and the Lagos Black Heritage Festival. He is also the producer of Nigeria's first Spoken Word Poetry Theatre production, Finding Home. Hope is a Nigerian, I know, because... A few minutes with Ife gets you wondering about what got him into poetry in the first place. What got me into poetry? I, I think um, largely allowing other voices in my head. I've always read, I've always read. I, I grew up in a house full of books. And um, you know, you, you, you read and you get to this point where you start to feel like, I can also write my own stories, I can also do this. You know? And I started out writing prose actually. You know, prose um, fiction, short stories. But I realized that each short story I tried to write wanted to become a poem. And um, each poem I tried to write wanted to be performed, you know, so it, it just sort of happened, you know, that way. I, and I, I still read more prose than poetry. The novel is still my most cherished form. Poetry is not as popular as prose in Nigeria, but is there really a bias against it? I, I wouldn't call it a bias against poetry as it were. And it's not just in Nigeria, I mean, it's, 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 it's all over the world. Poetry is not um, a particularly easy form to access you know, for most readers. And um, you realize that in, in, in most cases, most poets write in codes, you know, and 
most people don't have the, the, the patience or the, the, the cultural competence, as it were, to be able to decipher you know, and, and break these codes. You know, so people generally shy away from poetry because it's, it's difficult. So if I'm not reading, reading poetry to pass an exam, I probably wouldn't read poetry you know, as something you know, to enjoy for leisure you know, or, to, or to extract wisdom, whatever it is you know, people read for. You know, so um, it's, 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 not, it's not a Nigerian poet, uh, problem and I don't think people have a bias against poetry. It's just that they don't find it readily accessible, which is why I think um, the performance element of it is very important. This book titled For Broken Men Who Cross Often, published by Farafina, is Afi Paul Azino's first published collection of poems. Uh, For Broken Men Who Cross Often is my first collection of poetry. Uh, as a mixed media production, it comes with an audio CD and then the book. Uh, we wanted to do that because we felt, um, you, 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 people say the audience for poetry is declining, people don't read poetry anymore. But um, the audience of poetry isn't declining, as it were. It's, it's, it's moving to a different medium. That's why you have this, um, this recent growth of performance poetry, otherwise it's called spoken word poetry. You know, you have um, young people in different places across the world, you know, who gather at bars to listen to poetry, riff, you know, on diverse subjects, you know, so th that's becoming very popular. So what I wanted to do was to see, you know, get something that appeals to people who, who still read poetry and appreciate poetry, you know, on, in, on, in text, and people who would rather listen to poetry, maybe driving in their cars or whatever. Many of Ife's poems tend to speak to the multidimensional complexities and realities of Nigeria. One of them, Hope is a Nigerian is published in For Broken Men Who Cross Often. So I read a poem from the collection For Broken Men Who Cross Often. Um, it's divided into four segments. You have interrupted narratives, um, failed experiments in form, love, and life, too long for Twitter, and art in the shadows of process. In, in the shadows of protest. This is taken from the last section. It's called Hope is a Nigerian. Hope is a Nigerian, I know, because I've met her. Last week she looked at me through the eyes of a widow whose husband died in the pension line. Her only son a stowaway in a North African cell, Europe in his mind, yet she forges on. This isn't just a rhyme. I tell you, hope is a Nigerian. They say federal lawmakers take home over 20 million naira a quarter. Still the minimum wage of million other Nigerians can't feed, clothe and educate their sons and daughters. But the question is, why isn't there blood on the streets? Hope is a Nigerian, so she endures the consequences of the greed of her politicians. She inures her pain in the often banal creativity of her musicians. About 40% of her children are trained in public institutions where the students have no desk to sit on. One third of her university graduates are hardly literate, yet she argues her future is bright. Hope is a Nigerian at night, she powers her homes with generators and leaves before the morning lights to beat the traffic. Her roads are sorry sight, it's pathetic what she has to put up with, yet she suffers in smiles. Hope is a Nigerian, you see, she hardly flinches when she she announces she's the giant of the continent, its largest producer of oil, but 90% of its proceeds are controlled by one tenth of the population, while the others drink off the sweat that flows from their tireless toils. Everything in the natural seems to have failed her. So she seeks the supernatural for help. She prays for security and she prays for health. She prays for wealth and she prays for bread. She prays for peace, begging God to keep her disparate tribes together, even if by the string of a tread. Hope is a Nigerian, so she prays. Hope is a Nigerian, so she stays the bloody revolution that beckons. Hope is a Nigerian, therefore I reckon in the not too far distance awaits her change. Because the good book says hope makes not ashamed. So let Nigeria hope and let Nigeria pray. Let Nigeria fight and let Nigeria say the substance of our hope someday shall be. Hope is a Nigerian, I know, because hope lives in me. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. As always, please use our social media platforms to get in touch with us on any issue. We'll be delighted to hear from you. I am Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.